Good day Crafty Chums and how are you today? It's uh, Nikki here aka Class Indie Cat's Life and um, I just thought I'd show you the other view today. Um, I showed you last week, <laughs> I showed you the view that way and this week I thought I'd show you the view out of my window that way. Um, not sure whether you can actually see anything because the sun's on that side of the boat so um, you may or you may not be able to see what's going on. I don't actually know until I review the tape. Um, it's not really a tape, is it? It's more like the uh, memory card. Until I review the memory card, I won't know. Um, yeah, busy day in the marina today. There's lots of coming and going. Of course, it's fine weather, fine weather, and people come out and go sailing, basically. Um, yeah, we still haven't got our mast or our rigging on the boat, uh, which is a little bit annoying. It's been, since we asked them to put it back on, it's been um, eight weeks. Eight weeks and now it's in the busy season and and, uh, and the hoist is booked, fully booked, and um, putting the boats back into the water. So fingers crossed that we can get our mast put back on before May, which is when the rates in the marinas go skyrocketing, you know, they t fleecing, I call it, they fleece the boats that come in um, over winter, of course, because there's not, not much sailing going on because the weather is really bad. There's still a little bit, but you've got to be a real hardy sailor to do that because it's darn cold. <laughs> um, the prices go down so you can get quite a cheap marina berth, but south coast UK. Um, but of course now we're coming into the sailing season and so the prices go up and uh, we can't afford to stay where we are now because it's just too expensive so uh, we've got to move out because the rates go up 1st of May and so we've just got to, we've got to get out of Dodge, yes we have, got to get the what's it out of Dodge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, so anyway, um, I was on Skype the other day with uh, Anne Marie and Josie, and um, and we had an impromptu crop, <laughs> a virtual crop. We all sat down, we started chatting. Josie went to cook some dinner, chatting away there. So I thought I'd just like make some cards, and so Anne Marie did a uh, compact altered compact disc, and then Josie came back after she cooked her dinner and she sat down and joined in and did some uh, colouring in in her colouring in book so uh, so we had a virtual crop great fun and we were at it for about five hours I think it was just like hilarious <laughs> after we finished chatting because we all thought we were just talking I said oh you do realise we've just been to a crop <laughs> so yeah great fun Anyway, so I just thought I'd show you the couple of cards I made. So this is a watercolour um, uh, technique I've used with a stamp, just using the distress inks and you spray, you colour the stamp first, spray it with water, stamp it onto the paper and you get a watercolour look. So um, yeah, it's quite good. And last time I did this, um, I can give you a link to some that I've, because I've already done it as a, a little tutorial thing ages ago. So if I put the link there, I think last time I s said the link was there. When the camera's down at the table, the link is there. <laughs> but I think it went to the other side um, when it's upright. So I'll put a link, I'll put a card here. Card. <laughs> card from the cards. So yes, yeah, so it's quite difficult. So, um, so yeah, I just made these cards. Um, very easy, quick technique, and of course, put some uh, um, card around the matting layer around just to give it a nice finish to the card. I've left them plain so that um, at any point in the future, if I want to send it as something else, I can just stamp "Happy Birthday" on there or "Thank You" or, or whatever. Um, so uh, uh, this is a really these are called clean and simple cards or one layer card um, whichever you like it's the same sort of thing it's uh, it's quite um, flat so really good for posting in the mail and uh, this is the only one I did on the watercolour paper and it's the only one that came out really really light <laughs> all the others I did on um, Nina solar solar white card stock and uh, 
and it actually worked out better on that than on the watercolour paper. Who knows? Who knows? Um, so yeah, so I did a quick uh, painting last night. Um, when you see this, I'll post this. This is Thursday today. I'm going to post this on Friday. So um, when I say last night, it'll be Wednesday night is when I did this. And uh, it turned out quite nice. It's a, um, if you don't know what it is, it's a horse. <laughs> you might not be able to recognise it unless I tell you. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it's a grey coloured horse. And um, it was a really quick sketch. It took me, painting sketch. So that actually took me about 25 minutes from where to go. So uh, yeah, when I say it was just a quick sketch, it was. Um, if I do it again, you know, there are some things that I'd improve on it, uh, but other things I just keep the same because it's it's fab. <laughs> Love the mane, it, you know. The I don't know when this, this front bit is fringe is called a part of the mane, but you know I know that's mane. <laughs> but anyway, you know, who, who knows? But yeah, I quite like that. It turned out quite well. And fortunately, I didn't have the camera on. I keep saying that um, whenever I create, if I'm just sat there, you know, just creating, I'll put the video camera on. But to be honest with you, I just keep forgetting. Because um, I always think, ah, oh, no, I can't be bothered. It won't be, you know, it's not going to turn out very good. And quite often, the ones where I don't video turn out the best. <laughs> and the ones that I do video turn out really quite so who knows maybe i'll keep videoing maybe i won't <laughs> oh, so i'm all relaxed and chill today i'm squinting even though the sun's behind me because it is quite bright and i'm not used to the bright it's usually quite gray here so yeah relaxing on if you wonder i've got some cockpit cushions that my little sister made for me <sighs> It only took, how long did it take you, Joe? It took how many years? <laughs> In the end, I had to go to her place and 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 stand over her with a whip <laughs> to get her to finish them. <laughs> She's got a sewing machine, I haven't, you see, so it was like, oh. But anyway, yeah, so now I have my very nice, comfy cockpit cushions now. It's <sighs> a <So> life, eh? <laughs> um, so what else have I got to say? I just did that little bit of crafting there, you know, just had a crop. It, I tell you, Skyping was, you know, if you're on your own, which I am in crafting sense, uh, completely on my own, Skyping and just having that bit of contact with someone as you um, craft is really good because they can give you input as well, you know. You can say, oh, what do you think? And they'll say, yeah, it's nice, because they will say that to me. <laughs> I'm thinking, no, really, what's it like? <laughs> I'm asking for constructive criticism here. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to pull that curtain in a minute because it's now burning my back. <laughs> um, so yeah, so you can get feedback and, uh, and you know, ideas and things like that. So uh, yeah, so cropping's good. Now, uh, we talked about the other day, um, about uh, bullying etc etc <laughs> and misunderstandings you know you're telling someone something and uh, they misunderstand what you say and it causes sometimes can cause friction well whenever I come across a situation like that I'm always think of and um, judge Judy <laughs> she's my favorite um, TV personality judge Judy <laughs> judge Judy for president I say um, yeah so I always think of what she says, you know, God gave you two ears and one mouth for a reason. <laughs> and listen, <laughs> listen, actually listen to what people are saying. I hate people who pay lip service to what you're saying and, uh, and don't really take it in because they're not really listening then, you know. And then there's a whole misunderstanding that rises from it that wouldn't have happened if they just put their listening ears on. Zip it and listen. God gave you two ears and one mouth for a reason. Good old Judge Judy. <laughs> oh man. Anyway, it's enough of that. 
I don't think I've really got a lot to say. It's been a, a quiet week. Yes, so I'm just watching some guys over there. There's a, there's a chappy um, he's on the boat. He's just got on, on a, in a wheelchair. And they're getting the boat ready to go sailing. Uh, I think they must be going sailing this weekend because they're doing a lot of work on it. And, uh, and it's good for him, I say. Get out there, you know, all abilities. Sailing is for everyone, really. All abilities. So, um, yeah, good. Good for him. <laughs> and, uh, and we'll be out sailing soon, as soon as we get the mast and the rigging back on. Oh man, this is going to be like epic. This is going to be one of our longest things of trying to get people to do work on the boat. Get, getting people to do work on the boat anyway is extraordinarily hard really difficult and I don't understand why it would be so difficult to get people, tradesmen to come and work on it. It must be like calling a plumber or something. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh my goodness, never, no, it's really difficult to get people to work on your boat and, and put the mast and that back on. It's not something we can do ourselves, the mast and the rigging, because of course uh, you've got to have a crane for a start. Um, and uh, yeah, and it takes more than two people to do it as well. So you need the crane. So there's two two people on the crane. There's uh, um, two or three people to put the mask back on. And that's not including the crane driver and his assistant. And uh, and they charge you so much for an hour. And if you go like a second over the hour, then you're charged another hour <laughs> for the crane hire. It's like uh, ridiculous. Ridiculous, as Judge Judy would say. <laughs> oh, just got a power boat going out. Very nice. Power boats are so easy. The only trouble with power boats, of course, is you've got to have the money for the fuel. At least when you're sailing, you can sail. <laughs> you know, it's free to get your sail up and sail. It's free. We still have diesel on board, of course, because we've got an engine. You need an engine to go in and out. You don't actually need it. I mean, we've been in and out of, uh, we're in the Caribbean and uh, and I think it was English Harbour we were going into um, on, and I forget, Antigua, I think it was, I could be wrong, I could be like, but anyway, we were going into English Harbour and we'd lost the engine um, a couple of days out, uh, no engine, of course, and um, as we're going through the islands, getting to Antigua, uh, we got in the one night, because um, it, it was a couple of days, you know, and we were headed that way, so we thought we'd just, you know, go for it. And uh, and we went past in the um, lee of an island and lost all the wind. <laughs> so, no engine, no wind, so we're just like, ho-hum, ho-hum. <laughs> but, it's, of course, the eventually, a couple of hours later, the t tide had actually pushed us past the island and the sails, you know, the wind came back in through the sails, able to go to Antigua. So we're in there and we get into the harbour and uh, it's packed. Of course, it's summer, it's the height of the sailing season there. It is packed because they've also got a regatta there. And that's the reason why we went is to see the sailing regatta. And, uh, and it's absolutely packed and we don't have an engine you know you really want your engine we've got to pick up a boy or a buoy as the Americans would say but anyway we've got to pick up the boy and uh, in a packed <laughs> marina and we're a steel boat and all those loads of plastic boats around you hit if you hit if a steel boat hits a plastic boat <laughs> At any kind of speed, we're going to do a lot of damage anyway. <laughs> it, t it took, a, you know, a lot of pre precision. We have all these boats there, like, looking at us as we're coming in under sail. Because, you know, it's a magnificent thing to see a, a boat, a yacht, a sailing yacht, sailing in under sail and picking up the um, mooring boy under sail. But anyway, we did it picked up the mooring boy I mean man I had one attempt at it one go <laughs> if I'd missed that mooring boy I'd have been in big bother <laughs> but anyway you know because uh, you have to go up, up up front and you have to direct the um, 
direct the person who's sailing the boats with your arm signals to say where the boy is you know it's you have to go and you've got all your arm signals out to say which side of the boat it is how far away it is whether it's coming whether or over the top of it and uh, and so you've got to give all the arm signals so they know exactly where they're sailing because from the sailing position up front to the boy you can't actually see where you're going so you know we're doing all these maneuvers and there's no shouting or anything because it's pointless shouting because you can't hear from the front to the back you're, you're really not going to hear anything especially as you get a bit older and get a bit deaf so it's all hand signals you know and then I go down and I scoop it up and at first time <laughs> put pull in sails go down and we're just like ghosting there and we pull in and we fall back on this and you know it was just perfect and then all of a sudden we hear this great big huge round of applause there's all these other yachts around us i like celebrating because the steel boat didn't hit their boat <laughs> oh man <laughs> marvelous marvelous it's like um we go into a to a uh, um a uh, a harbor to um, actually drop the anchor there and, uh, and, and you know and and rest under anchor so we go in there and we put it down and the anchor goes out and you have to have so much chain out because if you have it too high up it just pulled the anchor straight back up from the bottom of the seabed so you've got to lay out a bit of chain along with your anchor to keep it down and of course you know because we've got that bit of chain out because we're, we're a heavy boat so we've got to have that chain out to make sure we don't pull on the anchor and uh, and and so we we ride around a lot on the chain you know we go this way boats go with the tide or the wind you know and they they, they swing around the anchor and um, but but we swing around the anchor and some because <laughs> we've got a very fine bow and it gets pushed sideways on and you know and so we we sort of like do this snaky thing around our anchor and uh, we went into this one place i think it was in saint lucia and we drop the anchor into into this harbour in the like middle of the boats because you have to because you know yeah that's where the um, anchoring space is. And we we dropped our anchor and we came to rest and we, we were doing our usual you know dancing around the anchor and that. And then all of a sudden all these boats started lifting up the plastic boats lifting up that anchor and moving further away from us. Oh man, hilarious. It's good to have a steel boat. <laughs> Plastic boats beware. <laughs> oh, so funny. Anyway, enough of that. I've chatted on long enough. Time to go. Got to do some crafting or something. <laughs> oh, I might go for a walk actually. It's a really nice day. Might go for a walk. See you again soon. Bye.